Well, let's get some more analysis now. We can speak to Juan Ferrero, who is a senior lecturer in Latin American politics at the University of Bath in the UK. Thank you very much uh, indeed for joining us. I mean, uh, some are calling this a bombshell ruling. Was it totally unexpected? Um, indeed, this is a temporary decision that needs to be confirmed by the plenary of the Superior Federal Tribunal. The timing is bad for Bolsonaro, who is facing one of the worst uh, weeks of the pandemic, as, as you uh, uh, reported just uh, pointed out. Um, opinions are divided with regards to the real motives behind this decision. The Federal Tribunal has not been shy to upset uh, Bolsonaro, as it did in last uh, December. Um, some have pointed to the links between Judge uh, Fachin and the PT, while others have speculated that uh, this move can actually save the car wars uh, case from collapsing altogether by moving it to the federal level, saving uh, possibly Judge uh, Sergio Moro reputation in the meantime. Whilst we can only speculate about the motives behind this decision, it is clear that it has sent uh, shockwaves uh, front, right and centre of the political spectrum. And it is a game changer because mainly two reasons. The court decision returns political right to the man who has been and possibly continues to be the most popular politician in Brazil. And secondly, it altered the plans of the opposition, which had been working in the creation of a broad electoral front in opposition to Bolsonaro. I mean, I'm assuming there's pretty mixed reaction to this news in Brazil. I mean, does this really, therefore, mean that Lula is ready uh, and this paves the way for him to run against Bolsonaro in October of next year? I mean, and, and if he did, what, was his ch what would his chances be? Well, it is not uh, clear at all. I think uh, Lula had uh, scheduled a, a, a conference for today, but then he postponed it for, for tomorrow. Bolsonaro is down but not out, uh, given his reckless management of the pandemic, open misogyny, authoritarian style. He continues to enjoy a popular support. Now, the question is, will, ruler, will Lula da Silva run for office for the third time in 2022? Or will he, like other popular leaders of the left in the region, such as Evo Morales in Bolivia, Cristina Kirchner in Argentina, Correa in Ecuador, grant his support to a successor who can appeal to the middle class and to the middle sector who might still be uh, angry um, and uh, dissatisfied with the old uh, PT uh, narrative. The eventual polarization um, again, between Lula and, uh, and Bolsonaro, in my view, give Lula possibly no room uh, no option but to run for the third uh, time. A confrontation between Lula and Bolsonaro raises the political temperature at a boiling point in Brazil. And um, some polls uh, suggest that Lula remained possibly the only politician with a popular uh, electoral pit to marginally beat Bolsonaro. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine a lot of Brazilians not being too thrilled with the choice of of. Lula or Bolsonaro. Uh, but let's not forget the context we're in right here. I mean, a very tough time for people in Brazil. The country is very heavily affected by the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm wondering whether something that might count in Lula's favour is perhaps a sense of nostalgia about what were much more glorious times, at least uh, relatively speaking, uh, uh, in economic terms for Brazil. Could that count in his favour? Well, absolutely. I think the question we need to raise at this point is, has the anti-PT sentiment that dominated social protest against Dilma Rousseff, the PT in general, anti-corruption mobilizations in Brazil, which culminated in her uh, impeachment, faded uh, in Brazil in the light of the appalling results of Bolsonaro president, presidency, or uh, the urban uh, young middle sectors continue to be um, angry with the uh, PT. Bolsonaro, in addition, has uh, penetrated the northeast uh, of Brazil, which had uh, remained loyal to the uh, to the PT for a long time. Um, so it, uh, it, the scenario is very much uh, open. What is clear, unfortunately, that um, the uh, the level of political debate is likely to descend to a battle of personalisms to electoral platforms largely defined by who I don't want, rather than more affirmative new political proposals based on addressing problems and proposing transformative solutions that Brazil so desperately need. And just lastly and briefly, if you will, Juan, I mean, I'm just wondering throughout all of this, I mean, we've seen in, in other countries, notably in the United States, the 
pandemic really uh, damaged uh, irreparably Donald Trump's chances of, of re-election. I mean, were the election to be held tomorrow? I know it's in October of next year, so a lot could happen before then. But I mean, uh, if Bolsonaro was to run today, would he win the election? What's his level of popularity doing? Well, he continues to above 30%, uh, which for, if you take into account the results in terms of the pandemic and other social uh, indicators, it's, it's, it, it, it is a significant level of support. Um, there's still a long time to go for the presidential elections. Um, so he is uh, someone tough to beat. And as a consequence, there's a lot of um, agreements and articulations in the, con in the, con in the opposition to uh, uh, set our a winnable proposal. Yeah, well, what's sure is that uh, next October is uh, uh, being lined up to be a, a, a very hot political debate and a, and a very interesting election to follow. Thank you so much, Juan Ferrero at the University of Bath in the UK. Thank you. Thank you.